so hi everyone, uh, I'm Asya and I'll be presenting some of the work from my PhD today uh, and I'll discuss this uh, perception of exercise as license to eat briefly. Um, so I'm sure everyone in the audience is aware that there has been a significant amount of research that has investigated the relationship or the interaction, shall I say, between exercise, appetite and energy intake. And I'm sure the experts in the audience could agree with me that the general consensus on this area is that um, subsequent energy intake after a bout of exercise session is it doesn't change or change very little compared to resting uh, control. So the resulting short-term negative energy balance should, in theory, uh, lead to weight loss if sustained over a period of time. However, we don't see this um, expected amount of weight loss in uh, long-term exercise intervention studies, as mentioned previously. So our research in this area revealed that there may be some compensatory behaviors in anticipation of exercise rather than in response to. So in this particular study that uh, Chris also introduced for me, so thank you for that, um, we observed increased energy intake in the pre-exercise period when we allowed our subjects to eat ad libitum throughout the day. And this effect was more prominent at the preceding meal rather than at all meal times. We then followed this up with uh, looking at the preceding 24 hours energy intake and we did this over two days. So day one uh, included just uh, after trial notification, so we let our participants, uh, subjects know which trial they were on. And we again allowed our subjects to eat ad libitum throughout the day, knowing that they will be either resting or performing exercise in a fasted state the next morning. In this study, we observed a significant increase in the, in, in exercise, in, in the evening meal energy intake uh, on the, in the exercise trial compared to rest. And this led to increased total energy intake, but the relative energy intake in the exercise trial was still reduced uh, compared to rest. So it still um, led to an environment conducive for weight loss. But I'd like to note that this compensation that took place in the preceding 24 hours were, was around 45%. Uh, so it was a quite a significant amount. Um, we identified three potential mechanisms that could be behind this effect. So the first could be because of a conditioning effect uh, where regular exercisers may learn to increase their energy intake around exercise over time to match the energy expenditure. And in this context, I think the diet goals of the subjects would be a key consideration. Second, this might be explained by the compensatory health belief model, which suggests that certain unhealthy behaviors like having extra food or snack could be compensated for by engaging in positive healthy behaviors such as exercise. So the subjects may have um, justified to themselves that the upcoming exercise session provided them with this license to eat more food in advance of the exercise. And the third, could be that the subjects were exposed to some of the recommendations uh, for athletes to increase their energy intake in the hours before exercise. Um, so clearly there's a lot more work to be done in this area. One of the key considerations I think we need to make to move this research forward is to investigate populations with different diet goals. The subjects we employed in our studies were regularly active um, individuals and they did not have any prior goals to lose weight. So I think it'd be interesting to investigate these populations and see if they would respond in the same way. And the second is to identify the time scale that this um, effect may start to show itself by employing inactive individuals for a long-term uh, exercise training study. Uh, so thank you for listening. I want to finish by thanking the organizers, Carolyn and David, for organizing this event. And also for so many of you in the audience who have laid down the groundwork for my PhD. Thank you.